So uh, this is just another question on biotech, which is uh, it, it's a space where there's a high barrier to entry, right, just by nature of the industry. And uh, one of the goals of the national biotech policy is for, for uh, the, the hope that, you know, uh, biotech can contribute 5% of G GDP by 2020. Uh, just want to get your feel whether you really see this industry, you know, being able to achieve that. From the um, uh, <coughs> number of uh, bionexus companies yeah, mm -hmm. uh, being approved by biotech, uh, the, um, biotech operation, I think I think the trend is uh, uh, on the positive side. Mm -hmm. <coughs> of course, uh, at the end of the day, whether we're going to reach uh, the five percent yeah. of GDP target uh, at this point of time, I, I'm not in a position mm -hmm. to say. Yeah. And I think it's it's best to uh, <laughs> to, 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 to speak to my to my biotech operation on this one. Yeah, no, but it's good. I mean, I, I think readers will, will be one. Uh, I keep using readers, right? I could yeah. be right most of the time, but uh, viewers will be uh, wondering why I'm asking a few questions about biotech. But that's obvious because you know, uh, Dev Ventures has gone into the biotech space to 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 help with the need and a gap that they see in the industry, and also because it's it's interesting to get Zubir's views on you know how he sees the issues too. You know, Iskandar obviously will have him on the show one day and ask his views, but. You probably you're offering us a different perspective. Yeah, so but if, if you look at um, if you look at ICT mm -hmm. when it was first uh, 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 established or when when it was first made uh, yes. <coughs> uh, pop, uh, public uh, in 1996 yeah. eh, through the establishment of uh, MSC so I think yeah. so biotechnology is I think coming to a stage where uh, it's still very infant. Absolutely, uh, the prime minister launched in 2005, yeah. so we are just merely four years mm -hmm. after the launch, and. Uh, I mean, for ICT, it's now more than 10 years. Yeah. So there's a, le there's a big gap there. So you, you can foresee that biotechnology can be as successful as ICT through time. And the way that we are moving, I think we are being moving in the right direction. Oh, yeah. So uh, I am quite confident at the end of the day uh, to say that we will be uh, meeting our targets. Uh. Okay. But probably at this stage, after just four years, yeah. it is a bit premature for sure, you sure. me to say, yes, we're going to meet. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, very good. <coughs> All right, thanks. Um, uh, uh, Zubair, one of the... Uh, key early key missions, you know, and I remember, of course, when uh, when Jiro was, you know, the first uh, CEO, you know, that was one of the key points brought up was that MDV's is, is role is also to help banks understand, you know, that it's actually viable to, in, uh, you know, to give money to companies in the ICT space. And uh, how well do you think this mission has been accomplished? And also, then in the biotech space today, uh, players have again expressed concern to us that you know banks are not able to listen and hear them, you know, as to uh, what they're doing in the industry. So do you think you can uh, play this role in educating banks in the biotech space also? But first about ICT, do you think you have uh, achieved your, your one of your early missions in that? Well, I must clarify that my, my friends at the banks, <coughs> they have a huge responsibility <laughs> with their stakeholders yeah. and, and you yourselves as depositors, they are, they are there to safeguard the assets. Yeah. And I think M MDV has got a different role. Mm -hmm. uh, we establish as a niche financier yeah. uh, to help ICT and biotechnology. So we have a different mandate, mandate. altogether. And our responsibility is our stakeholders, which is the government of Malaysia. Yeah. So I guess uh, from very start, there is a different mandate yeah. between uh, what the banks can do mm -hmm. and what MDV is supposed to do yeah. for a start. But having said that, uh, MDV has never been in competition with the banks. No, of course not. No. So we are always complementing the banks. In fact, in, in most of our services, we use the banks a lot uh, in terms oh, okay. of our partner bank facilities, mm -hmm. the LCs, the BGs, and other performers are all used with our pa partner banks. Sorry, the BT, what is that? The bank guarantees. Oh, the ba BG, bank guarantees. Uh, the bank guarantees, the, uh, the letter of credits, yeah. uh, and other performance mm -hmm. guarantees. We use the banks a lot. So MDV is actually complementing mm -hmm. the banks, and we, we fill the gap where the banks do not want to come in yeah. or are not willing to come in. So really, uh, f for, for you to say that MDV is supposed to teach the banks, I think it's, yeah. that's a very strong statement, yeah. which I think that's not what MDV is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Whether the banks uh, uh, are more comfortable with ICT or biotechnology, Today, yeah, there's something where uh, we, we want to see. Yeah. But I think uh, it's, it's wrong to say that MDV has a role to, mm -hmm. to educate yeah, the banks. Yeah, right? yeah. <coughs> okay. All right, good. Thanks. But in the biotech space, then, do you think you'll be able to... Uh, um, show the banks you know that this is a, a viable you know sector for them to invest in but they will probably look at established companies you know right and, and yeah. the kind of companies you look yeah. at I think in the case of uh, industrial biotechnology there are uh, space where the banks can come in mm -hmm. because for a start uh, 
in the case of biotechnology, I mean, converting biomass to, into yes. uh, a power energy, yes. uh, those are technologies which are actually uh, being uh, uh, proven okay. uh, that they brought in. One, number two, in the case of bio, industrial biotechnology, in in most instances, uh, there are sponsors uh, which are willing to use the energy that they okay, have. Okay, yeah, there will be sponsors or buyers, right? Right. For the so output. in that respect, the take up rate is quite I would call a firm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I see a lot of uh, opportunities for the banks to come in mm -hmm. and help fund biotechnology as far as uh, industrial bio is concerned. Okay, okay. On the healthcare, yeah. other natural products and agribio, I think uh, depending on the stage they are, that's why MDV is trying to fill that gap mm -hmm. where uh, uh, the companies are not ready for commercialization yet. But once they are commercialization, and uh, I think this is also where the banks will, will be able to come in. Okay. So uh, let us see where are the gaps are and, and see how MDG can come in. But I believe once uh, they have passed the certification yes. and commercialization, uh, they are, the banks may be Maybe. Uh, willing to come in at the time. Yeah. Uh, just a, a question on, uh, during the interview you said that you saw a gap you know, still right, in the industry and and you're saying that you know uh, being able to convert you know a portion of the equity you know uh, of of the loan into equity uh, is something that you actually see you know uh, probably needs to be done you know but uh, you guys wanted to try to fill the room but you cannot because of your mandate so uh, let, let's talk about that why why do you think you know th th this gap is there and, and you know the, it obviously you feel it eventually needs to be filled so um, between getting grants. And when venture capital comes, comes in, in, there's already a gap, okay. which is a small gap. Yeah. Yeah? But after the venture capital has come in, and once the financial institution banks or MDB can come in, it is true. That gap is, is real in its big. But um, what we're saying is um, uh, with the uh, lower upside uh, as a lender that MDB is taking, uh, we cannot be taking too much risk. Mm. That's just what you said. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we can do is to uh, uh, allow MDV uh, to take more risk by uh, giving us flexibility of converting uh, our uh, loans into debt, yeah? okay. uh, as most venture, uh, debt venture capitals uh, in the US are doing. Mm -hmm. That is why in the US... So convert uh, your loan into equity, right? Not yeah, yeah. yeah okay. and at the best point of time, and limited to a certain percentage, uh, so this is not happening yet in, in, in Malaysia, and I think, as I said, MDV has got a, a very specific mandate yeah. to, to, to perform, which is providing uh, loans. But I would uh, hope, uh, in time to come, there are more private uh, yeah. venture debt companies. Uh, oh, private who, venture debt companies, yeah. okay, not it's venture capital companies. No, okay. venture debt companies okay. who, are, who are willing to take this space, mm -hmm. uh, left out by venture capital and MDV, yeah. because the gap is, is real. If you are operating based on a private uh, uh, funds, yeah. then I think you are able to take much more risk and you're able to structure in such a way that you mitigate the uh, the risk eh, okay. through higher returns. Yeah. And that is through uh, options and convertibles. Option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very good, interesting, great. Okay, great, uh, uh, that's all we have for this week. Viewers, uh, please, okay, I got that right, instead of saying readers. <laughs> Viewers, uh, please share your comments and, and uh, feedback with us, you know. Uh, as Aisha likes to say, she's taking uh, uh, the week off, obviously, with Zubri sitting in the seat. <laughs> well, I'm just warming up today. <laughs> Is that, you know, uh, please send your comments in and nothing can be too critical or nothing can be too biting, but please make it constructive also because we do want to improve the show. This is your show. Help us make it better for you, right? Okay, and as usual, you know, have a great and productive week ahead with technology and we'll see you next week.